Super fun. All right, all right, all right. Hey, Hector. Hello. Hi, Hector. You ready for a big night? <laughs> and that's good. Door wise, we'll be able to swivel it enough to put the trap up, yeah? Hold on. Thank you, Hector. There are around 500,000 cats currently living on the streets in New York City, which means there are as many stray cats in the five boroughs as there are human toddlers. That's way too many cats. And these cats don't lead great lives. They live on the streets, under buildings and in empty lots. They die young and sometimes in pain. It's horrible. But most cat lovers don't know or care about their suffering. Sometimes someone does, though. There are people who dedicate their lives to saving these cats. These ugly, disabled, sick, forgotten cats. They're drawn to the grimy bottomlessness of cat rescue. So are they obsessed? Or are we just callous? Becky and Britt are two halves of Greenpoint Cats, a nonprofit cat rescue in Brooklyn. Hi, sweetie. We started just kind of helping the cats in our colony. And as it turns out, um, there's a lot of cats in all over Brooklyn and New York that need help. I think this might be a chick. Trapping looks very violent. Five minutes of just discomfort and shock um, and upheaval is is so worth the the payoff, you know, which is that that cat's gonna have a much better and longer life. Basically, they trap the cats, vaccinate and sterilize them, then return them where they came from. It's called TNR or trap neuter return. I think the most the we've most ever we've had, had in the rescue room was 16. fourteen. Oh man, we are so lucky. Good night. Becky and Britt are taking the latest load of kitties to the vet. It smells like cat piss, yes. I changed the cover of the stink stinky one. It reminds me of the trip up to New Hampshire. Why? Because all the cat shit pissed all over the carriers and had diarrhea and you had to smell it for four hours. I don't know why you wouldn't want seven hours. I never really expected to fall into this. It's hard to always explain to people. Like, my own family doesn't quite understand, you know, what I do and why I do it. You're also trying to convince people or show people that you're not a crazy cat lady. All right, so looks like we've got three females and one male. So three spaces and a neuter, probably. Everyone will get vaccinated. Ear tips to indicate that they've been spay neutered so they can go back out. Um, revolution for flea treatment, rabies vaccine. A lot of the burden of caring for, you know, the outdoor cat population um, and really, you know, solving a problem that is widespread and affects everyone falls on individuals. It falls on us and it's a lot. We borrowed this. this is they are feral, which means that they are not socialized, they're not tame and so they want nothing to do with us. Feral cats live in colonies to survive, 
congregating around any food source. And with over 3,000 colonies in New York City, that basically means infinite kittens. Yeah. How much sleep are you operating? Very little right now, it's like three, three hours. hours. And but the night before, last night we four got four. Hours. So, yeah. Becky and Britt remind me of self-styled superheroes. They wear jumpsuits and scale fences to bring justice to kitties everywhere. And they stop at basically nothing. Come here. They've been scouting this empty construction site for weeks, monitoring the feeding patterns of at least a dozen strays. Thank you. I see eyes up there. I think we should just do box traps. They're spooked, they're freaked out. Maybe we split up. When I started trapping, I was doing it because I was like, oh my God, this cat is really sick and no one's gonna take care of him. So I have to do it. It becomes a little obsessive. It becomes almost this game, you know? It's like Pokemon, gotta catch them all. And then you get there and it's like an adrenaline rush, right? It's like the race. Who's gonna trap first? <laughs> These women look at cat trapping as an extreme sport. It's almost like hunting. They seem to be not very skittish. Yeah. So I'm thinking that they'll go under. Yeah. Becky told me that to catch a cat, you never look it in the eyes. And if you forget to turn your phone off, the whole mission could be blown. It's a tense, silent operation. They could be out all night waiting to fill the traps. This is tough. It's like they know the rest of the chickens in here. Okay. 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 How do you feel? <sighs> Frustrated. When we were here the other day, next door, there's 10 cats just like ready to trap. And like, you just can't control it. We think there's probably around 12 that are not fixed, um, are fed from the windows up there, the windows over there, the yards here. I mean, it's, they're well fed. People are giving them food. It's, it's wonderful. The problem is, is that they're also reproducing. New York City doesn't operate any programs to solve cat overpopulation. The burden falls to volunteers, who see the suffering of cats as paramount. Welcome to the crazy cat family dungeon. Farhana is a rescuer in Queens who works with Becky and Britt. So what's happening here? Once I find cats that are friendly, they come in here, they recover, you know, they get healthy enough for adoption, they get old enough for adoption, then they get adopted. Sella, you gotta let go. <laughs> I've never been in a room with so many cats at once, and it smelled feral. But the cats looked happy. Turns out, the difference between a cat hoarder and a cat rescuer isn't the number of animals. It's whether they're cared for and how well. So what is the scoop on this girl? Well, um, she was found by one of my other rescue friends. She texted me a picture of it, like at seven in the morning. She's like, I have a kitten for you. <laughs> but what does it mean to care for a cat? I don't have like isolation space for her right now. Okay. Yeah. I can take her. Yeah. We got space. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. You're nice. Oh. You're mine. Lady nice. They're going above and beyond, fostering a kitten when they already have several. You know, it makes me kind of have this, like, they're the underdog feeling, and that's why I have this, like, strong connection with wanting to, like, make sure they're taken care of. So, Terry is a girl, you said? Yeah. Okay. Becky and Britt spend an average of $400 on every cat they rescue. Some fundraised, some from their personal savings. Come on, honey. Oh. Okay. Oh, 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 oh. Uh -oh. No, no, no. Easy, baby. Okay. Okay. That's a good girl. Okay. Okay. Uh-oh. Oh. We're good. Hello, little Hi. one. It's okay. 
In one survey, 40% of respondents said they'd rather save a pet from being hit by a bus than a foreign tourist. Rescuers take it to the next level. They want to save everyone's cats. Unfortunately, she's going to need yes, a hospital doing. visit. They're always expensive. It's never easy when they live on the street. Sure the care necessary to keep even one cat healthy for a home is mind-boggling. But frankly, so is the level of obsession humans have always had for cats. Okay, honey, come over and show everybody how beautiful you are. Musicals, memes, festivals, superhero characters, cosplay, and hundreds of hours of viral video. What is it about cats that inspire so much culture? For one, ancient Egypt was rife with cat-headed deities, and unsealed tombs often revealed the skeletons of cat companions. And there's a 600-year-old festival in Belgium dedicated to cats. But like much of cat culture, in Europe especially, that event has a dark history. It actually originated as a festival of cat torture. People rounded up a bunch of cats from the street, then threw them off a 200-foot tower. Today, that's still the pinnacle of the festival, and they throw stuffed cats. In the Reformation, Protestants dressed cats as Catholic priests and hanged them at the gallows. Catholics cut cats' ears off to make fun of the roundhead Protestants. The ritual torment of cats was fun. Maybe this history is part of why Becky and Britt are willing to sacrifice their sleep and spare bedrooms to cat rescue. They might be driven to be protectors of a species that has a history as rich in torture as it is in snuggling. Hello? Hello? Becky's investigating a tip from a fellow rescue enthusiast about a colony in Queens with loads of strays. Turns out, it's at someone's house. Hello? So the windows are all busted. And this... Hello? Hi. Uh, Is your mom home? Uh, I saw something. It looks like maybe they go in and out of the basement. Like you, there's more kittens somewhere. Does an alleged cat hoarder live here, or just someone with a lot of cats? Hi! There's a kitten like you, there's more kittens somewhere. I'm sure you haven't been spayed or neutered, and you have a very big belly. Are you a pregnant kitten? That would be really sad. I went around every side. It's like you never know what's going on inside someone's house. I really want to take that kitten. Hi, big boy. Oh, oh my goodness. My God. Oh my goodness. Why were you so shy before? Oh, this was a good decision. Oh, I'm man. so happy we did this. Hi, buddy. I'm gonna do kitchen. You were worth it. You were worth it. Was it a good decision, though? Becky went home with a really friendly kitten. To my untrained eyes, it looks like she took someone's pet. Do you ever worry that a cat who maybe, in fact, is being well taken care of, you might take it and be mistaken about its condition? We certainly don't want to be um, vigilantes um, who are abducting cats. Come on. Don't try to kiss the cat. At this point, the kitten had gone back behind the fence, and we were observing the law, which is we were not going to trespass and go onto her property and take the kitten, but the kitten was going back and forth. This is a neighbor who was walking by and was like, those are her cats. Generally, if we find the cat and it's outside, it's not spayed or neutered, it's not microchipped, you're off the bat to me like an irresponsible pet owner. New York City law is on her side. It requires that you fix your outdoor cat because of the overpopulation problem. 
At the same time, what Becky did still seems controversial. This wasn't a mangy cat eating pizza scraps. It was an unspayed kitten in someone's yard. In those basements, you could have shimmied in that basement. Ever? I just know I would have done that. Why didn't you text me? She likes to call the cops, and that maybe. I know, but I could have pretended to be like, I don't know, like drunk. (laughs) 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 I fell in this window. A day later, Becky reached out to the owner of the house, Linda. Can I tell you a little about me and why I was there? Uh, Yes, the first word is Johnny. I'm sorry, what's his name? Johnny? His name is Johnny. Yep, Johnny is with me. Um, I'm a rescue group and welfare group, and he is with me. He's doing great. My question for you is in terms of Johnny and the other cats, um, or do you have any interest in or intention to spay and neuter them or get them vaccinations? Um, we have a different philosophy, you and I. Okay. Mm. Right now, you have my cat without my permission. So, you have no permission to neuter him. You have no permission to do anything without my consent. And I want you to return him to me. Actually, technically illegal in New York City to have a free-roaming, unsterilized animal. You see, that's where we disagree. Yeah. You, your mm-hmm. view on reproduction and my view on reproduction, our, our sure. is different. Maybe we'll never because agree on you, that. Yeah. You have crystallized your thoughts, mm-hmm. and so those are yours, but you're trying to impose them on me by coming into my yard and luring my cat out of my yard. Return Johnny, please. I think we should talk We're about it. We're not negotiating Sorry. this. You took my cat. I want you to return him. But Linda's situation is a perfect example of kind of what I feel is a no-win situation. There's two scenarios. One was I stole the kitten. I'm, you know, this horrible person. I trespassed. I abducted the this cat. Well, then I abandoned the kitten. And maybe other people would criticize me for not have help, having helped a kitten that I could have easily just taken with me. Becky's back at Linda's with a local friend and rescuer named Yanni. Becky ended up returning the cat from last time, Johnny. So um, I did neuter him <laughs> and I vaccinated him and I microchipped him to me, so. So is she pissed? Um, oh my God. I didn't tell her that part. So we've tried to show her what's going on in the neighborhood and, and why we need to get these cats fixed and vetted, but she doesn't want to participate or cooperate. So this is what we do. and. People won't participate or cooperate. Does she know you're coming back tonight? No, no, no. To Linda, cats need and want to have babies. To Becky, it's a moral responsibility to stop them. It's like a political debate playing out on a feline scale. It's a female. Which is awesome. How we old want. is she? She's pretty young. Um, she Linda young. mentioned that she's young. So this is the mom to um, baby Johnny. That's mom, Johnny's, Johnny's mama? mama? Yeah. Oh, that makes me happy. That makes me very happy. So the nephew is here. He's inspecting the traps. I can't tell if he's pissed or not. I can imagine he might be. Oh, 
What are you doing? I don't know. This is going to get ugly. Linda's coming out. Yanni and Becky were over it. They had come here at midnight to expressly avoid Linda. But I wanted to meet her. Are you Linda? Hi there, Miss Linda. I'm so sorry to bother you and wake you up. My name's Alice and I'm with Vice. I would love to hear your perspective. I know you're upset. I am, so please go away. I understand her reluctance to talk. Becky's methods are invasive. And it's strange that the city relies on random, cat-loving citizens to enforce its laws. It's clear Linda cares about these cats. Why else would she be outside at 1 a.m. to defend herself from the catnappers? I mean, it seems like she thinks that these are her cats and that you guys are taking her cats. Do you ever think about it from Linda's perspective? I feel like she chooses to see things in a very different lens that, to me, is just like not seeing suffering. We see so much suffering, and it's so preventable. Is it possible that doing what's right for the cats could include what someone might fairly perceive as harassment? We are allowed, we are legally permitted to do this. She wants her cats intact. I'm sorry, like, but the law says something else. So, yeah. Well, we got one. We got one. Um, Starts with one. Got and then two. I'll come back next week and then get another one. <laughs> yeah. I've been reading lately about how people have finite capacity for empathy. No matter how kind of a person you are, eventually the suffering of others will wear on you. They call it vicarious traumatization. But there's also vicarious enjoyment. Maybe that's what Becky and Britt feel when they release one of these cats back into the world. This is your big day, buddy. Hey, Hector. How are you? It's your day to shine, Papa. Live a good life. Run like the wind. Go on, you're home. Bye, buddy. Great. Right. It's the best part. This has nothing to really do with my affection for cats. It's about my need to have some kind of purpose in my community and my inability to overlook suffering. Good boy. 